Let me introduce myself first. I am Dr. Sujata Mohan, Rajan Eye Care Hospital, Chennai. I've been practicing ophthalmology for the past 32 years and my area of interest is cornea and refractive surgery. Of course, all ophthalmologists do cataract as well. So um, that is also my area of interest. So anything to do with the anterior segment basically. So I got an invitation from Doc Plexus to come and talk to uh, you all about something which will interest you and which will benefit the patient as well. So I desire to speak on uh, unhappy patients post cataract surgery. So we, we come across several patients who have had an absolutely fantastic uh, cataract surgery done, clear, nice pupil, clear crystal, clear corneas, but they are not happy. They complain of glare, halos, fluctuating vision, irritation, watering, so on and so forth. And they really put you down because, you know, you, you, you want to do so much for them and then finally you come across a situation like this. So then you blame it probably on the multifocal eye wheel that you have put. Could it be that or is it uh, the glare and halos are caused because of uh, an amesopic pupil size or because of starburst, because of any, any, what could be the reason? So why not think of a dry eye after cataract surgery, probably that should be the first thought that anybody thinks of uh, in an unhappy patient after cataract surgery because the first refractive surface of the eye is a tear film and to maximize visual equity, we must ensure the tear film is healthy and not dysfunctional. Several studies have shown that the T-butt or the tear film breakup time significantly goes down after cataract surgery and it goes down for a period of up to two months. Even Shermer's test and all OSDI scores increase when uh, after cataract surgery. So this is the reason why most pac uh, patients, though they have a 6 by 6 vision, crystal clear corneas are not happy because there is something really bothering them. So we should not take them as fussy patients. We should really look into their uh, symptoms, which could be like foreign body sensation. They'll say something has fallen into the eye. There's a corner which is irritating. I'm having watering, I'm not able to look at the computer and I'm having fluctuating vision and then there's a sudden sharp pain. So all these symptoms could give you a clue that these could be the, the probably the root cause could be the dry eye. So what are the main causes of a dry eye post cataract surgery? An aging population, we deal mainly with patients who are um, uh, aged in cataract. There could be coexisting systemic disease like hypertension, diabetes for which they are taking uh, oral medication. Ocular surface disruption by the uh, tropical drops that we give, for example, we put them on a lot of pred food and uh, the antibiotic drops and NSAIDs which can actually produce both dry eye. And the other important thing is the corneal nerves can be cut during the corneal incision that we make in the phaco emulsification and any other additional procedure that you have done like an LRI or an astigmatic in, uh, uh, incision. And lastly, the inflammation induced by the surgery itself can cause this. So preoperative uh, evaluation becomes very, very important to prevent an unhappy patient. So the first and foremost, what you have to look at is the lids. Look, look at the lids to rule out any blepharitis. Whether the patient has got a mabobian gland dysfunction, you press the mabobian glands and if you get a clear oil uh, coming out of the mabobian glands, then you are safe. But if you get something um, uh, like a mucopurulent discharge or uh, if you get a, a, a sticky uh, white toothpaste like consistency, then you know that you're in for trouble in this patient because the patient must be having pre-existing dry eye which is borderline and is not the patient is still not complaining about it but you will totally tilt the balance after cataract surgery so in these in these patients you have to stain and see the corneal surface do a shermers do a t butt and make sure that the uh, the ocular surface is good if not we have to treat all the conditions which the patient could be having so it's important to look at the osdi scores that is the ocular surface disease index scores, the Schirmer's test, the T-butt, and most importantly, staining. In patients with borderline dry eye, you can make out even by doing a topography that if you, uh, the topography is totally distorted and after you put the drops, it changes within a few minutes. So there are various ways you can uh, measure the uh, uh, tears, uh, tear factors. They can do a tear lab osmolarity test. You can do an inflammatory dry eye test 
and also you can do a, a tear scan um, uh, for a system to measure the lysozyme, uh, uh, lactoferrin and IgE in the tears. So the inflammatory dryer test actually takes samples of the tears from the inferior conjunctival phonics and uses a developer to find out, it's just like a pregnancy kit and uh, if it uh, comes out as pink that shows there is MMP9 positivity. So what does MMP9 positivity indicate? It basically indicates that the patient has some inflammation, there's got inflammatory markers in the tears which, which for which the only MMP9 kit is available but you can rest assured that they'll be having more cytokines and other inflammatory ma markers which are causing, actually causing the symptoms of dry eye which are chronically irritating the eye. Basically they're all toxic tears. So, you, so the, we have to look at what could be the leading cause, what could be the root cause for all this dry eye, uh, particularly in patients with um, uh, uh, who are undergoing cataract surgery. And as, uh, several studies have proven that uh, maybe when gland dysfunction is probably the leading cause of uh, dry eye. And there are several reasons, first the age and then uh, the post-operative status and then uh, the, the patient's uh, habits. Like, you know, post-operatively, they don't clean their eyes at all. They're scared of touching their eyes. So what happens? There's a buildup of uh, uh, the, uh, the drops, the substance which blocks the meibumian glands and then worsens their already pre-existing dry eye. So the consequence of events is first there is thickening of the meibum because it's not able to flow properly. It's followed by sloughing of the cells within the glands and reduced meibum secretion and blocked ducts resulting in the inflammation of the eyelids, ultimately leading to a poor ocular surface, causing the symptoms of dry eye. So there are several methods, uh, newer uh, methods which by which we can uh, find out how the patient looks. The first and most important being the clinical examination, history taking, and then you look at several factors such as the uh, teofilm breakup time. And there are uh, several machines which are uh, available in the market now, the teofilm diagnostics which will give you an idea about the interferometry, which is the, actually the lipid layer. So, if we are able to visualize the lipid layer and find out whether the patient is having a normal or abnormal lipid layer. If the uh, lipid layer is normal, you can go ahead with the surgery. If the lipid layer is abnormal, then you have to look at the root cause of uh, the problem, whether there is any meibumian gland obstruction. And then the patient has to be put on warm compressors and artificial drops to make sure that is uh, uh, is um, is uh, is interferometry increase that is, is a lipid uh, layer improves. There is also mabography which uh, shows how many glands are uh, whether the babubin glands are there and how much of them are functional whether it's active and whether by doing the warm fermentation whether it's going to help the patient and look at the uh, look for uh, demodex look at the lid margins look for uh, uh, blephritis and treat all those before we uh, take them up for uh, cataract surgery. So the management in these patients would consist of doing a warm compress and you have to tell them to do a warm compress at least 10 minutes, just not, some of them just cup uh, 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 water, warm water to the eyes and think it's warm compress. It's not like that. Now, uh, either they use a wet cloth, which has been dipped in uh, warm water and uh, kept on the eye at least for 10 minutes and three times a day. So the warm compress can be done by means of masks or um, uh, uh, you can microwave the mask and use it on the uh, eyelid. So after it's done, you have to teach them how to milk th the glands. So it's basically we, what we are doing is we are milking, we are melting the meibumin secretions which have been blocked. And if, once you do it, start doing it regularly, it opens out. And uh, meanwhile, you put them on artificial drops, um, artificial uh, tears, gels and ointments, and also anti-inflammatory steroids uh, may be required. Some of them may require uh, cyclosporin, Functal plugs can be introduced if there's no inflammation in the eye and additional support like omega-3 uh, fatty acid capsules. Doxycycline helps in the management of uh, uh, the, uh, advanced babobin gland dysfunction. So now the, uh, let's talk about something which is very new and which has been in practice only for the past six months, which is giving excellent results at uh, the intense pulse light. So the intense pulse light basically was used first in rosacea because and they found they were able to destroy the abnormal thrombotic uh, vasculature. And they found that there was an advantage even in uh, patients who have a dry eye disease. And now it has been uh, marketed for dry eye disease as such. Here, the, um, the intense pulse light is applied uh, in the malar area. It's not applied on the lids. 
as you would think, but it has an indirect effect of heating up the meibomian glands and also has a, uh, stimulates the parasympathetic nerves to the glands to secrete. So, so it has a, an effect both on the aqueous drainage as well as relieving the meibomian gland uh, obstruction and it is, uh, it is shown to have excellent results. It is, <coughs> it is a pulse light which is uh, extending from the 550 to 1200 nanometer range. So, the user as well as the, the doctor both of them have to uh, wear goggles so that it does not strike their eyes. The time taken is only about 5 minutes. It is totally painless and um, uh, there is a no scar uh, and it is an excellent uh, modality by which you can uh, treat dry eye and particularly the evaporated dry, bulb, dry eye which we are talking about that is the maybe wing gland dysfunction. And uh, the next that we can uh, talk about is the, um, uh, the uh, lippy flow. Lippy flow has a different modality of action. What it does is it uh, uh, there is a console from which the uh, energy is uh, delivered to the uh, uh, to a regulator which is placed on the lid. So it actually it catches hold of the lid like this and gives a continuous intermittent pressure. So the uh, by it basically produces heat and also gives pressure. So by doing this by uh, intermittent pulsations, it is able to milk the glands as well as give uh, proper heat. That it, it provides a, a complete coverage over the cornea so that it, uh, the heat is not transmitted into the eye it's and it is a 12 minute treatment. So within a, t a matter of 12 minutes, the glands are opened up, it is very nicely milked and uh, the baby glands start functioning uh, ve uh, very well. Session a year probably, they say it is for life. So if you need it, then you might have to come back, the, the patient needs it, they have to come back for one more session. But basically it is just done in one session and the uh, quality of uh, uh, life definitely improves for the patient because patient feels much more lighter and once all the blocked secretions have come out and uh, the, the tear film is uh, better nourished with uh, a proper meibomian uh, discharge and the dry eye improves a lot. And now there is another uh, new one uh, which is in the market which is called a stick cell. It is basically again uh, uh, was used in uh, dermatology for uh, relieving uh, you know wrinkles, removing wrinkles and a uh, lot of skin disorders, the, uh, wrinkles around the eyelids, neck, etc. And it has, it is a similar modality of action, it applies heat, at the same time it has a very, as a, um, there's a micro puncture. It is totally painless, though it is a micro puncture, it is totally painless or very low level of pain and it is done directly on the eyelids in contrast to the IPL which is done on the malar area. So, uh, this is also shown to, shown to have very uh, positive results and um, uh, since it is uh, a dermatology extension, the cost might be a little bit more when compared to IPL and uh, lippy flow. So, summarizing I would say that a pre-op evaluation of a borderline dry eye patient and appropriate management will make the uh, patient a lot more happier, particularly when you are putting a premium eye oil like a multifocal eye oil where you expect the patient to have a wow factor. If you are not uh, taking care of the ocular surface which is probably the first uh, sir, refractive surface, then you are going to be, have a very unhappy patient. Whatever, uh, whatever amount he has spent on the cataract surgery is going to make him very unhappy. So, uh, you have to look when you are treating these patients, look at the newer modalities of diagnosis and therapeutic equipments which are uh, there to uh, help you and uh, treat these patients effectively.